Gunneritos, it's Nerdburger here! Hi, it's Future Kaz here. While I was editing, I realised just how bad my hair looked. Have you ever watched a 1980s hair tutorial on how to make your hair really big right before filming a YouTube video for the world to see? No? Well, I did, and it looked bad. In fact, the back looks like a ponytail, but it's just a giant knot. So, enjoy my terrible 80s hair that I attempted during isolation. Uh, and today, I'm joined by a special guest, Squeaky Drink Bottle, and my husband... Squeaky Drink Bottle Boy. What's your name? I am. We've already forgotten it already. Ham's in the house. Whoop, whoop. Gone isolation crazy. It's so exciting. Liam and I haven't filmed a video together in a little while. In a little while. And we haven't talked about comics in forever. We've, uh... I don't even remember the last time I read comics before the isolation. Yeah, you had a bit of a break. Yeah. I myself continued to read, but Liam has come back to comics. We spend every morning in isolation and we get in our nice comfy bed and we make a taste of coffees and we read our comic books in the sun. It's delightful. It is delightful. It is a nice yeah, way to It's a lot more day. light than our last place. And so, yeah, we're now in our new house. And do you like this setup? About. Look at this. Our Look at this. The comic setup. These are all my um, short boxes. And on the front, I've got a comic that I like. Look at this signed Dan Sort She Hawk. That's a yeah. good time. Because it's one of those things that when you collect single issues, it's how on earth do you display them? With them looking nice. Like yeah. They're just cardboard boxes. Yeah. But so far, so good. But we're thinking about getting some kind of perspex on there so that they'll look nice. But that's yeah one of the big headaches of displaying single issues and even collecting single issues. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about today. But I did want to show you this. Yeah. I did want to show you. I'm very proud of it. But we're talking about comics today. And... Uh... We start. have a lot to get through. Wait, you... What have you been reading? I've been start reading first. some trashy, trashy manga, if mm. you will. This is the equivalent of watching Love Island, or what's that new one I wanted to watch? It's about, there's one on oh, Netflix one that just like, came you, out. You can't, you can't You can't have sex. They're like on an island, they're all good looking, and they can't have sex, but we all know they want to have <laughs> sex because they're good looking. Well, this is the manga equivalent of those, if you will. Look, we all know they're not the best... Uh, you know, for morals and things like that. Also being a female and things like that. There's problems here, but we're just going to enjoy them. We're going to enjoy them. The first one is plus-sized elf. And this is as trashy as you think it is. It's about an elf named Elfunda. And Elfunda came to this world, okay, um, and then got stuck here because she ate too many potatoes. And you see, you have to be a particular weight to go through the magic door to go back to your land. And so Elfunda can't help herself because potatoes and deep fried potatoes are so delicious. And so it's about the many adventures of her and the many people that come to our land, the world, and then they eat too many potato chips and deep fried potatoes and can't go home. And uh, it's very trashy. There's lots of sexy bits. I don't even think I could show you half the pictures. But there's like nice rotund ladies um, <laughs> in tight tops. Having a good time, you know, eating some food, going to the beach, and uh, it's very trashy. It's delightful, and you just have to turn your brain off, because we all know that's problematic, but I like seeing pictures of uh, chunky elves wearing tight tops. It's a good time. That's it. That's my whole review on that. And there's cool monster designs, but I had a good time. <laughs> uh, and then this one's called... I don't even know what I was looking at. Yeah, I told you not to look at that book, because you're... it's quite extreme. What are you up to? Volume 4. Four. And I'm waiting for the next one to come out. And then I read The Delinquent Housewife. Now, this is only four volumes, and I read all four. And what I thought it was about is about a young woman that used to be in a motorcycle gang. And then she's met the man of her dreams, and then he's had to go away for work, right? So she has to live with the man of her dreams who she's going to marry his family and get used to them for when he comes back and they get married. But she used to be a motorcycle lady, so she's learning how to be a housewife. It's a little but less she, risque than the last one. It's not risque at all. It's oh, all really? about the fact that the younger brother has fallen in love with her. Oh. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. I thought it was about <laughs> her going to be a housewife and mm. wanting to do that. But yeah, it's all about the, the younger brother falling in love with her and there's not much he can do about it. And it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Did I have a good time? Yes. Did it distract me from my anxiety attack when I couldn't get out of so bed those couple of days? Yes. So what got you onto this? Um, I liked the art. I, I saw it art. in previews. And I have all four volumes, mm -hmm. and I liked the cover art, and I was like, I'll give it a crack. And then I was invested, and I finally read it. I've had it for ages. It was a good time. It, it really is like reading Love Island. There's many, many problems with it, but you just enjoy it. It's fine. And that's all I have to say about mm. those. That's my trashy manga I've been reading. And then what can I show them? One? 
that's What's that's that? not trashy. This is really good manga. This is called Blank Canvas by Kiko Higashimura, and this is the person that did Tokyo Terror Reba Girls. And you know I love that because I talk about. Oh, it all so the time. that's her autobiographical. Yeah, the autobiographical comic. comic. So yeah. she did that. She did Princess Jellyfish, really really popular manga artist in Japan. And um, so far there's four volumes of this. I think the fifth so one. So she comes part out of like the new wave of writers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's quite different in Japan because she is a divorced single mum. You know, so that's not very common among manga writers in Japan, and it's really cool reading their story and seeing how hard they worked to get where they are, and learning the process of making manga, and just the craziness of her art teacher and the influence that person had in her life. Yeah, it sounds like it would be a nice perspective and like a nice change from. I find no offense, but a lot of the manga I read feels like it's been written by a teenage boy. Yeah, that's not written by teenage <laughs> no. this, this feels like it was written by a teenage boy uh, and enjoyed by a 34-year-old woman. But um, that, uh, yeah. yeah, it's really, really heartfelt. And yeah. there's a lot of parts that paint herself quite poorly. So oh. she's not nice about the situation or things she could have done better. Oh, so she's a, is it a mangaka? She, yeah. She was? Or she still is? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a nice little slice of life comic. It is. It's sometimes really hard to read because you want her to succeed or to do something and, you know, this is a real person, yeah, this is life their real life. Really, so yeah. everything's not perfect in it. So it's really, really good. And if cool. you're a fan of, um, yeah, the the creator's work, like me, Tokyo Tower Reba Girls is the best thing ever. I read it so many times. And um, Princess Jellyfish, then definitely read this. Or even if you're interested in the process of making manga and what it takes to become a manga creator, you should definitely read that. And then um, I would show you one more manga, and then I, I've just got a lot to talk about. I've read a lot. Um, this is Downfall by Inio Asano. And you remember in my video last time I was going on and on about them because they were on Terrace House. Oh, yeah, remember? yeah. Because he showed up for um, Pepe's comic. Pepe's comic. Pepe's comic. Pepe's gone now. That's sad. But anyway, so I was really excited about Inio Asano, and I ordered this thinking it was a series, but it's actually a one-off. And guess what? It's also about being a manga creator. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that does not portray the person very well at all. Uh, it's a strange ride about a man that meets a younger woman. Doesn't he at and... one point, like, reference Delinquent Housewife? Yeah, he does. Uh, Akiko Higashimura <laughs> does reference him yeah. very roundabout way, but it had the cover of Tokyo Terror Reba Girls-ish. You know how whenever they talk about McDonald's, they call it McDeneeds or something? Like, they give it a roundabout name so they don't get sued. Starbucks is Starbucks. McDougals. McDougals. From Fat Pizza. Called... Remember Fat Pizza? <laughs> hey, you think I have the most successful franchise in the world, you suck ass. Oh, tell me, Max Stooge. <laughs> now, um, half the audience McDougals? is like, what is Fat Pizza? But <laughs> anyway, it's a really, really wonderfully illustrated book. Look, I mean, look at this. That's... Inio Asano is so crazy mm. talented, but absolutely brutal. Whenever you read their books, you're not going to be sitting there having a nice time. It is brutal, it is heartfelt, and it gets you right in the gut. It is the most truthful writing, mm. and so many emotions flowing at once. There will be a panel where you're delighted, and then the character will do something horrible, or it's just very relatable. And that's they're known as like the manga creator of their generation because it portrays what it's like to be that age now. So the first one I read was Xerxes. <laughs> yeah, this is the prequel to 300 and... They made a movie of it, right? And yeah. And this is the comic... Yeah, so they made the, the 300 Rise of the Empire, but that came out, I think, about three years before the comic was even published. So it was based off the idea for the comic that Frank Miller had. And that film was trash. It was absolutely trash. But the, the comic, I was really surprised with. If you've read 300, you'll be familiar with the art. It's, uh, but I don't think Lynn Varley did the colours for this one. Actually, no, Alex Sinclair. So this is a new colourist. But they actually like get the aesthetic pretty spot on from the original. What's the story about? Yeah, so the, the story of this one is just about Xerxes' rise to power. And if you've read 300 or seen the 300 film, you know Xerxes is the, the evil tyrant, like the king of Persia. And uh, they, they're the ones who are the... Uh, who the 300 Spartans are fighting against. So that's where the battle is. And so, yeah, it's it's, it's beautiful. It's, uh, again, it's I just... I like the light hitting. Like, it's yeah, really shiny. Yeah, so Frank Miller is just really, like... 
he's hit and miss. Some pages you'll be blown away by, but then others just like the the faces. He just he gets a little lazy here and there. But like I said, Frank Miller gets a free pass to me. Like he's His one of the most. Always sell. He's one of the most influential and uh, like just comic creators of all time, and he's uh, he gets free pass. He he's uh, proven his worth. And I will, I will, anyway. I'll always support him. So yeah, Xerxes, I would actually recommend it. Just this week I've been getting into the DC comics again. So I started on Aquaman because you had, I think, the first five? That is not organised yeah. at all. I oh, need to okay. organise my trades. So I missed out on the Rebirth series completely. And uh, the last Aquaman I read was the Jeff Johns New 52 run, which was amazing. Yeah, it got a lot time. of people into That got me Aquaman. really in the course. That was the first comic I reviewed, remember, on the yeah, channel, was yeah, Aquaman. Yeah. And then I dressed as Aquaman. Yeah. So, um, even though this still, like, it from... I've, I read the first trade, and the mm. first trade was just retreading a lot of that same ground that Jeff Johns established in the New 52 run. But... I was really disappointed with the trade one, but then as trade two started, I realized that Dan Abnett was deconstructing everything that Jeff Johns built. That's pretty and much was, what all the books yeah, did in Rebirth. And it was to then, anything. yeah, starting like a whole new era for Aquaman and reestablishing his place, not like in the DC Universe, uh, his place within the Justice League and also the relations between Atlantis and the world or America. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really good. So Aquaman is uh, facing uh, the Nemo, which is a, a new threat that was created. It's a I didn't secret, read any of this. Oh, it's a secret organization that just wants to take down the world. They're like a, they've been around forever and they're a secret power. That's always, It's like the Court of Owls. If you've read Batman, yeah, it's, it's, it's that. pretty much Aquaman's Court of Owls. But it's really fun. It's really come into its own, and uh, the stakes are a lot higher than they were in the Jeff Johns run. Like, you can see that Dan Abnett, because he originally wrote uh, spy and espionage com uh, I was about to novels. ask what else Dan yeah, yeah. did. So a lot of military novels as well. Oh, so, that's Dan Abnett. Yeah, yeah. So he's, <gasps> he's a novelist, and he's uh, just... I think he's always dabbled in comics, but now he's like really like full into writing Aquaman. To talk about Jeff Johns once again, oh. I'm now onto the Grant Morrison Green Lantern. And so the Green Lantern that I am most familiar with, apart from the old Green Lantern Green Arrow run, is the Jeff Johns run. And so Jeff Johns wrote the whole... Uh, Blackest Night. Just like the, yeah, Blackest Night, Brightest Day, uh, Forging of the Yellow Ring, all that. He came so, up with all the coloured rings. Yeah, he? yeah. So That's the, so epic, yeah. I think that... That came from one person. Yeah, so the whole, like, lantern spectrum, the rebirth thing was from him. Grant Morrison, on the other hand, has now thrown away all that and written Green Lantern in more of a, like, a European comic. So it reminds me a lot of the Jodorowsky stuff, especially, like, yeah. things like uh, the, the Inkal and yeah, the Mobius the kind of stuff. Yeah, all the humanoid books. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's... So uh, really popular at the moment, so I can see why he's going down that track. Yeah, so it's uh, very psychedelic... Uh, not not grounded at all. Half the time you're wondering what on earth is going on. It oh, does gosh. come together at the end, but it is, yeah, really just it's an absolute psychedelic read. I'll, yeah, I want to have a one. look. I'm look at yeah, so Liam Sharp did all the art for this, and so that some pages can look a little bland and a little awkward, but when he's able to just show off the power of the ring and just really get into these alien worlds and the creature designs. It's yeah, really you're fun. showing me all the creatures. They look cool. Yeah, there's a dude with like a, an atom bomb. Yeah, that looks blowing. totally <laughs> humanoid. Is that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. Humanoids comics. Yeah, so... European? Yeah. I yeah, so it, it's really fun. But on the other hand, there, there was part of me that missed reading the uh, the tra the traditional Green Lantern. Like, I just wanted Your to... Your traditional. Yeah, my yeah. traditional. I just wanted to revisit, like, I don't know, the, the Blue Lanterns and see Sarlacc oh, and that's why Killawog you wanted me to pick him and, up from work. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> and see Sinestro again. And, uh, yeah, it, it's fun. But at the moment, I'm just... Even though I'm two trades in, I still don't quite know what I'm reading. I'm not that... In, and it's like reading his uh, Batman and Robin run... That, oh, uh, yeah, that was yeah. crazy. So it, was, it started off pretty grounded, but then it just went way off. And, uh, yeah, I, I think sometimes he's, uh, he gets his a little ideas ahead get of too himself. Big, yeah. Yeah. This is called Asta and the Accidental mm. Magic. This is similar. In fact, 
incredibly similar to Hilda. So if you enjoyed the Hilda cartoon and the Hilda comics, which I have a lot of, it's very, very similar. Oh, so that's a Netflix show. Yeah, 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 the Netflix show. It's an adventure comic about Asta. Um, and they've moved into a small town and there is a curse of birds that come and they ruin the town. And they have to prepare every year for this big event to make sure nobody gets hurt and all the homes stay. So it's like stay. Hitchcock or? No, it's like Adventure Time meets Hilda. Oh, okay. In a way. Even and, uh, the art, like, her design is very reminiscent of Hilda, I reckon. Yeah, so yeah. this is a, a fun adventure book. If you want some more Hilda to read, definitely recommend it. The character designs are really, really fun. And I really enjoy the, these little acorn people. But it's just a fun, fantastical adventure comic set in the wilderness. Mm. With you great love character those. designs. I love them. They're, I think they're my favourite All Ages yeah. book. It's definitely an All Ages book. And it took me a while to get through. And on a day where it was, like, kind of moody outside and windy, um, looking at all the autumn colours in there, it was just nice. It was mm. a nice time. Uh, and then if you enjoy the 90s, well, can I recommend this? There's two trades. I waited so long for this. Originally, the first six issues came out in single issues, and then they've just gone straight to trade now, which Boom are doing for a lot of their books. Um, but it's called Heavy Vinyl, and it's set in a record store in the 1990s, and each person there is like... Kids like, love the 1990s Yeah, right they now, do at the moment, and so do I. And each person that works at the store is like a little bit different. Look at it's that like, choker. Yeah, no, she's the, she's the goth one. Yeah. And they talk about and a cyber... And la- a lacy choker. Yeah, they talk about cyber hacking at one point, but they also have a fight club in their basement. Oh, what? Yeah, because they fight like crime, musical crimes, and this one's all about Napstar. So, can't, but they give it a different name, like the manga do with Starbucks. Uh, and yeah, Napstar is a thing, and they're gonna take down the world through a virus that's been coded into a song that's gonna be downloaded by everyone on Napstar on, on New Year's Eve. And it's such a fun, silly concept, and made me go back in time to when I was really worried about New Year's Eve in the year 2000. I thought I was going to die, and I filled the bathtub with water because I thought there was going to be no water. But it was a good time. Uh, not that. That wasn't a good time, but this was a good time. So it's also YTK. LGBTQI friendly, yep. which is wonderful. But it's a good time. It's, it was just a, a, good time. a good time. A good time. And then I just got in a mood to read Harley Quinn. Is that after Birds of Prey? It was after Birds of Prey, but I'd packed up all our boxes, you see, and um, I couldn't uh, couldn't access them. So the minute we unpacked them, I got all these out. So I have random volumes. So I have uh, volume one of Die Laughing. This is the Rebirth one. I think I've read this, honestly, mm. five times. It's a good time. Mm. This is um, but this is my favourite one, the New 52 one. Not of all time, but this version of Harley that reminds me of the movie. It even has the beaver from the movie. So if you enjoyed the Harley Quinn movie, I called it the Harley Quinn movie. It's, but it's, it's, the it's Harley a Harley Quinn movie, movie alright? Uh, how, how many, like, <laughs> minutes of Birds, Birds of Prey? Not there? enough. Not enough. Probably maybe, like 10 minutes. Maybe in the sequel. But if you enjoyed it, it's pretty much this book come to life. She's crazy over the top. So many costumes came from this, but also Injustice, like Tom Taylor's Injustice version of Harley came in there, which was weird. But, um, I dropped my book. That's fine. But this is a really good time. It's over the top. It also has Power Girl in it. And we all know... I think I have a picture mm. of Power Girl behind me. But we all know I love Power Girl. Mm. And she lives at Coney Island. And she inherited this Coney Island building. And there's all these fun characters that live there. Like an Eggman that has these robotic arms. And she starts work at an old folks home. doing uh, Helping them out with their problems. And uh, they invent a poo shooter. Which is like a... It's called a scatterpult. Where she puts all the dogs. Because she adopts like a million dogs. Uh, and shoots the poo off the roof onto other buildings. It's just really silly and fun. I wish they would stop bringing the Joker into it, mm. which yeah, they only ever do. I think Harley do. as a character has really come into her own when, yeah. Yeah, when, when, she's, she's, when she's solo. Just being crazy. Uh, so it's annoying in Trade 2 when they start talking all about the Joker and all the random spin-off issues they had, like Harley Quinn goes to San Diego, and like... Uh, and I think that's when like Harley's at her weakest. It's and more, terrible! And most cringy. <laughs> yeah, and there was a line in it which irritated me, which I read this morning to you, which was like, oh, the something about like being in yeah, love. Yeah, Joker threw me into the. Uh, which at the, the time I thought was an act of love. Here, yeah. here, uh, it was a romantic gesture, but at the time I was so freaked out. Um, dude, a dude threw you into a vat and burnt your skin white, like bleached it white. Hmm. That dude's nuts. That's not a romantic gesture. 
Anyway, that annoyed me, and then I looked, and it was Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti that wrote that line, and it irritated the hell out of me. But that was for like a one-off mm. that they just included. But the rest of it is a really good time. So if you need some shenanigans and watching people blow up things, adopt dogs, shoot poo off a roof, kiss people, talk about silliness, then it's a good time. Mm. And that's all I've been reading for the past week. Uh, there. Mm. Do you want to talk about something yeah. else? Yeah, so... This is fun. I'm having a good time. You're having a good time. You're having a good time? Oh, that, you had a good so, time yeah, reading so that. Yeah, so this uh, this one had been sitting on my shelf for a while, and uh, it's, a, it's a massive one. It's Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters by Eric Powell. And uh, Godzilla comics, as you know, are hit and miss. So uh, there, there are some that are better than others, and uh, you, as a Godzilla fan, you just have to take what you can get. Hmm. It's just, you just... They don't make a lot of you them. Don't, you don't get many. And, uh, and I then they w- take them out of print, like the Stucco ones yeah. out of print at the moment. Yeah, so there are ones like that I've talked about many times. Yeah, that one. The Half Century War, which is the best Godzilla comic ever written. Read, read, read. Uh, even if you're not a Godzilla fan, that will convert you and that will make you a fan. But that's what, not what we're talking about. We're talking about Kingdom of Monsters here. So, never have I laughed more... In a Godzilla comic. Uh, he kept, I was trying to read my book and he kept being like, oh, oh, and like trying to show me yeah. panels. And I think like one <laughs> of the uh, biggest flaws in Godzilla, uh, like Godzilla films, yeah. I, I think the Americans take on Godzilla. So Godzilla 98, the uh, Gareth Edwards Godzilla and now the, uh, the, oh, what was his name? Whatever Neil, the one with Breaking Marshall? Bad dude no. is. Um, yeah, so no, that was Godzilla. But oh. yeah, Kingdom of Monsters as well. Uh, they just get so bogged down in human drama. And it's just like, how do the humans take on Godzilla? And it's like, the humans just, they've got no chance. They, it's Godzilla. It's what like, can you, you watch do? the Godzilla 98 and you wonder why uh, Roland Emmerich thought it was a great idea to have Godzilla running away from the military the whole time. Why would he and run? And it's like, he d- just, it's the military is nothing to Godzilla. And it showed that they completely missed the point. Anyway. Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters just handles this so perfectly because it keeps on building up these uh it's kind of like the the war room discussions kind of like the uh uh Doctor Strange Love type situations where they're figuring out how to tackle this huge monster who's destroying the country and then they come up with uh, an idea and then they like go to execute the plan and the plan fails miserably and in hilarious fashion and it's just it's so much fun just seeing this every so often cut in the background so Godzilla oh, yeah, is at the it. foremost like he's at the the forefront of the comic it's it's all about him it's all about him battling uh, different kaiju that appear uh, there's a whole range there's uh, even mecha Godzillas in it you've got Angaris you've got um, Hedora at one it's point it's a good mix and it's real fun but yeah so Eric Powell just has these great comedic sensibilities to him that everything is so done with like tongue in cheek and every character that they set up you know is gonna just meet just a hilarious fate and just make no impact on Godzilla whatsoever. I love the bit you showed me where the guy was doing something epic and then it hit him in the head Yeah, and yeah. it just was like a tink. <laughs> like yeah, instead of being this yeah. big explosion that was going to blow up Godzilla, it yeah. just was in the background you see this yeah. on the yeah. top of Godzilla's head. Just on his nose. Yeah, it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good, but yeah, yeah it's, um, it's, just a, it's just a really fun story and the art in it is just really beautiful as well. So I think this was um, Phil Hester, but it's really bright and colourful, and you even saw that King Ghidorah was back there. And it there. lets you see the monsters in all their glory. It's not bogged down like, you know, in every Godzilla movie it just turns into... Turns yeah, into just like, it's, it's always like nighttime and raining. Oh. And you can't see, but here you can see all the glory of the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Even Rodan's in it, look at that, like Godzilla and uh, Angaris teaming up. <laughs> it's so yeah. cute. I'm going to talk about one more. One more? Just one more. I've got one more too. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's almost like we planned this. But we didn't plan it, <laughs> which is weird. That's what being husband and wife for 10 years will do me up. Uh, so, I am not aware of the writing of Tom King. So, even though I work in comics, I'm a okay. I'm aware he exists and he writes comics. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I've never really read any. It doesn't really interest me. It sounded more like a Liamy thing. And I was like, that looks a bit boring. And it was a Liamy thing. But um, I was not interested.
interested until, for some reason, I decided to read the sample comic of Strange Adventures that we got at work, which is the new Tom King book, uh, which I definitely recommend. It's only got one issue out. You should definitely get it. It's a good, well, it's not a good time. It's pretty epic. It's, it shows two sites. Someone's uh, autobiographical book about their adventures and how they're same in the world and how they perceive themselves and then how they actually are. So you're actually reading the pages of a book which is done by one artist and then another artist does the guy doing the book signings and talking about his book and his actual life. It was amazing. Mm. I've only read one issue but I was like, this is so good. Is this who, is this Tom King? Because it's awesome. So I went home and I bought The Vision for Liam and Liam hadn't, was like, I don't know if I want to read it. And I was like, read it, Liam. Everyone in my work that reads your books reads this. And then you read it mm. and you enjoyed it. Blew my mind. I enjoyed it also. Because Vision, if you look at like the Marvel movies, because personally, I I haven't read mm. much Marvel. No, so The Vision, I am only really familiar with. Through the with, films. Through the films. But and most he people is probably are. the most boring cardboard character. But that's the characters that Tom King chooses. He mm. chooses obscure or characters that are mm. a bit more Like old he did school. with Mr. Miracle. Yeah, so mm. old school characters and so he has more creative freedom with them and they let him do what mm. he wants. And yeah. this is just two trades or they've put it together in one book now and it is brutal. It is heartfelt. It's a... Uh, I think Tom King, he... With Mr. Miracle and also The Vision, he just writes 12 issue runs. And so he. It's clear. Yeah, every he, issue he has a He plots everything goal. out and yeah. there's a, there's, the story arc is there. And you know that from the moment you start reading, it is building up towards something. And I think as a writer, that is just a really valuable trait because a lot of people will start writing without an end in sight. And you get things Especially like. Especially with Marvel, yeah, it's never ending. You get these things movies. like when you read like The Walking Dead that just kept on going and going and going and then you, there just no end in sight whereas this you just it's you clear. see issue, the evolution yeah. in characters though. yeah and you're following his life so you're following the vision and his family life with his wife and two kids and their dog uh, <laughs> and just some things happen in the course of this comic that changes his family life and changes his life mm. so you're watching someone's family life but you're also watching a family fall apart in a mm. way in the same way it's just so brutal and so gut-wrenching to read but just also a joy to read mm. like i looked forward yeah. to reading it there's something so human in his writing as yes, well and yes. just his especially under, it yeah. being about a, a robot yeah, about thing. a robot trying yeah. to understand what it is to live an american life and to live in the suburbs and that whole the the idea, idea of american yeah. dream where you've got your wife you've got your house you've got your kids and uh, just, de again, just deconstructing it the same way he did with Mr. Miracle, whereas it was focusing on, like, the Jack Kirby's New Gods, mm. but pulling it in and grounding it and just... Yeah, grounding making, it. That's yeah, the making word. a whole story of just about Mr. Miracle and Big Barda just having a baby and how to juggle the superhero life with family life and just the give and take there. And that's my favourite mm. type of superhero book. I've always enjoyed mm. when comics uh, with superheroes are more relatable, mm. that you can see yourself in part of them mm. or someone you know or yeah. some, some real life. And that's what this is. It's so... Mm. Human. It, it's just when like, it's about a yeah, moment. it's like reading um, the Miles Morales Spider Man. Like, yeah. are you more into Spider Man or are you more into Miles Morales? Miles Morales. And the same with yeah. Invincible. It's just like, yeah. what side do you find yourself most drawn to when reading those comics? And it's just that Tom King just has this amazing grasp of just how we work on just a um, emotional level that just really draws me in. Yeah. Like, and who would have thought? It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I think two of the best creators working today are Sean Phillips and Ed Brubaker, and they've just been producing these little criminal uh, kind of side stories at the moment. So they released All My Heroes Are Junkies, which was... That's really, such a title. Really good. And uh, then Bad Weekend. It's the story of a an old comic book artist who uh, made his career right, uh, developing a TV series and a whole generation of comic book fans grew up with his work. And uh, so he is now... You call him soft. Yeah. Uh, he, he's now like a senior and he is coming to a comic convention against his will and one of his old assistants from way back in the day has been called to be his minder for the weekend. Oh gosh. And so this guy has no interest in being at a convention. He <laughs> just he's cut from a yeah 
<laughs> he's just he's he's not into it. And so it comes upon like a little bit into the story that he has been he, he's not the nicest guy. He's a bit of a crook, and he's been faking a lot of his earlier art and like prints and things and signing them as uh, official and authentic just to make a little bit of money on the side and so he then finds out that his daughter has sold some of his art and so since he's in town he's going to go and find that art and take it back because it's rightfully his art and uh so yeah it becomes like this story about like break and enter and crime wow, and that's not what I all, get all the around a comic convention and just the different kind of uh fans you get at a comic convention also the different uh d different types of artists and the different people and how they see the comic industry and it's it's it's, it's just really fun and Ed Brubaker's stories, they always start, like, I, I, I open the first page and I'm like, hmm, am I going to like this? And then all of a sudden I've read the entire book and I'm just looking through my shelves wanting Trying more. Trying to find more, yeah. So that's what we've been reading. We've been having a good time reading books in the morning. A little bit, You yes. can rant all you want because we're allowed to. We're in isolation. Mm, haven't You're, done this in a long time. I know, time. it's good. We've had a good time. We yeah. talked about bookies. Got Sausage cat. joined us. I feel like he's just about to. We bite. started off alone and we ended up gaining a cat. That's nice. That's a very Tom King nice story. Tom. So um, let us know what you've been reading in the comments down below. And also, as I said earlier in the video, please support your local comic stores at this time. You'll see a lot of artists are doing, uh, you know, giveaway. Well, not mm. giveaways. We call them auctions, selling mm. their art to try and raise money to keep stores going. Mm. Stores are not getting new single issues or no, new trades at the moment. Everything's on hold, so they need to sell the stock that they have. So please call and support your local comic store. Send them an email order some bookies and show them some love because we need it mm. we really need it so we love you guys and they can always give recommendations as well so oh if man anything, i the, love giving yeah, recommendations if there are books that are currently coming out that you're sad that you yeah you can't not, get more not of getting up on just ask, ask. There, there's a whole slew of things that uh yeah you've got a whole history of comics that yeah. at your disposal that, yeah. I had a really fun time the other day mm. when a guy emailed and he's like, I've got a budget and I just want some bookies. Can you suggest some fun books under this theme? And I went around the store and I asked the other staff and we came up with like a fun pack for them and sent them off the next day. Mm. And it was just a really good time mm. choosing books that I loved that I knew someone else might enjoy. So you could do that at your store. Anyway, thank you for listening to my rant and Liam's epic rants. Isn't it nice that we're both here it's together? It's good being back. I had a good it's time. It's nice and quiet. It is very cool. And I like the acoustics in this room. Yeah, it's a good room. Mm. It's a good room. All right. Well, we better go because now I'm going to have to edit all this. Sauce says <laughs> bye. Can you see his little head? He's going to sleep. Pickle says bye, but he's in the other room. Love you. Bye.